Next up, we have Russ Reba with Lunabotics. Where are you at, Russ? All right. Okay, so I actually announced this at the last uh, bar napkin pitch night in June is where the first... Uh, idea for this came from. About a uh, year and a half ago, I went to something called the um, Northern Michigan Space Symposium, and I met a whole bunch of people who were actually making a business out of going to space and sending stuff to space, and actually uh, got really inspired to do stuff. The last one, six months ago, I went to again, and due to some interesting scheduling errors, I ended up going on a wine tour that was supposed to be about 30 or 40 people, but it was me, an astronaut, and two other guys who basically one owns a launch company and one builds rockets. And so <laughs> we spent the day going up the peninsula and drinking, and then there was me, and they're like, why are you here? And I'm like, I live two blocks away. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've been dreaming about sending stuff to the moon since I was a kid. I've been building radio-controlled cars since I was 10. Uh, Rover, or not rovers, but like drones, everything else. I built 3D printers. I program CNC machines for a living. And, there, and my dream was to uh, also take the video game stuff I do and send a robot to the moon controlled by virtual reality. Uh, it's only 1.3 light seconds away, which basically means a three second lag time, and you could actually pilot a robot on the moon. And so that was my dream. I pictured you could take this robot, bring it to a classroom, put the helmet on the kids uh, with one video stream. Everyone could look around in real time and actually explore another planet and get people to actually fall in love with another planet or possibly do the same thing on the moon since it's much, or on the earth and make them fall in love with their own planet. And so that's kind of my background, my motivation to do it. Um, so this is sort of my general idea of how to do things. Um, based on that, night uh, that uh, just kill all the connections I made. Um, we've actually come up with some actual business plans on how to do this. I've got some estimates of between uh, three to five years, five to 15 million dollars. And of course, I am me. I am a single dad and I have kids in school. And so uh, what I've been doing is basically just traveling around um, and trying to convince people to uh, help me pursue my dream. So this is just some interesting facts about the moon, basically it's the top picture up there is the actual stuff to scale. The bottom one is not quite to scale, but it, to give you an idea, basically there's another continent we've never been to. We've technically been there uh, six times, 12 people have landed on it and most of them are dead right now. Um, so we wanna go back, we have plans to go back. By 2024 they wanna have a man and woman on the moon. NASA's got plans to do that with the Artemis project. Uh, there's multiple countries, multiple companies all planning to go back. Uh, and I plan to go with them at some point. So there's some challenges, okay? We can all build rovers and stuff like that. We can build robots, uh, but the moon is actually pretty harsh because unlike Mars even, there is no atmosphere. Uh, you're coming in, you have to basically uh, completely bring all the fuel, not just to get there, but also to slow down to stop without making a crater. Once you're there, the temperature basically goes up to just above boiling during the day and negative uh, 100, basically battery chemistry stops working at night. So nothing non-nuclear has ever worked over the lunar night, which is basically the two weeks when you don't see the moon. So the space economy, there's now $344.5 billion in 2018 that was spent in the, uh, the global space economy. And that is growing as Elon Musk and the others are starting to work with um, reusing rockets instead of rebuilding the, the transport every single time they go into space. So one thing they don't have is the lunar robotics because we have never been there. Okay, so we've never gone back for 50 plus years. Uh, so all the challenges I don't have to deal with. How do we get the rocket there? I don't know. Uh, how do we land? I don't know. Other companies are solving everything that's hard. How do we transmit the data? There's, uh, there's like 10 companies figuring out every single piece of this. The part I need to deal with is the environment, the temperature, radiation, regulate the micrometeorite stuff. If I can make a robot survive in the environment, I can just pay to basically be storage or payload on someone else's lander. Uh, we should have a new lander on the moon 
ideally next year, sometimes in 2020. So uh, space tourism. The idea I have is basically virtual space tourism. Uh, right now, trying to send a person up to the moon um, or even into lunar or, or low Earth orbit or the ISS. Uh, to go to the International Space Station, you can do that right now for $40 million. Uh, Virgin Galactic t charges $250,000 for a 10-minute flight into lunar or, or sorry, low Earth orbit. Uh, you can see the other prices up there. I don't need to read them for you. So um, there are those three companies planning lunar landers. I basically am just going to be cargo on their ship. So my ask, if I could, $50,000 if anyone is interested. I'm spending about one dollars to $3,000 a month basically extending my network of people who are in the space industry. Everybody's very excited to work with me because in general they work with um, corporations or countries and they're kind of like, now who are you? And, um, and I basically just kind of go to places and crash uh, events and expos and things and I've got a ton of contacts and I'm just trying to work with the money because uh, one thing I did learn from recently going to MIT and actually looking at all the robots and stuff that I've only seen on, um, like, uh, what do they call it, um, popular science and all that type of thing, is that they have, they're built by, uh, you know, kids in college. I know how to do that type of stuff. What I don't have is basically the time and the money. So I have one more kid in school. Uh, the other one just went to college, which means no child support, lots of extra time, lots of extra money. <laughs> I'm turning it into this, pro this uh, project. And in the two years until my, my next daughter goes to college herself, I intend to either be uh, an employee of one of these companies or a competitor to them. All right. And, it, and, so, and so now, uh, any questions? <laughs> yes. Um, I have built a self-driving car based on Raspberry Pi and Arduino, and it uses the Deep Space Network protocol to communicate, even though it doesn't need to, but because that is what the lunar or landers of the various companies will be using to communicate. And so um, also because it is a uh, low-power device, um, once you get into radiation-hardened hardware, they uh, generally are several generations backwards. So by using cheap, affordable things, I'm actually sort of ahead of the curve for the $500,000 computers that might actually be required. Yes? I am not quite sure of the business model at the moment because at the, it's actually literally impossible until four or five companies all put everything together like a piece in the Tetris puzzle. But my idea in general is that if I can build the robot to uh, let people visually, remotely pilot things in near real time, that I could either license technology to um, people doing lunar mining or uh, exploration, NASA, that type of thing. Uh, if I can come up with a protocol to do virtual reality, there are some ideas I have to take uh, FPGA and some other things to um, possibly make a virtual reality specific protocol. And then there's also really tight bit compression, which I've actually done before for a local company doing uh, satellite communication. And so I know how to do uh, uh, satellite network design. And so I'm trying to combine video and satellite communication into one thing and possibly put it into a chip. And along the way, not to mention the uh, environmental problems I'll be solving, uh, I think that all those would be marketable and possibly patentable. Yes. That's more of the nuance of actual control. The current thing I'm trying to do, which actually has already been done by NFL, is to take one visual data stream and let multiple people do virtual reality at the same time from the same stream. So one person could be the pilot and everyone else in the classroom could actually look around. Or uh, not necessarily classroom, but the network operations center. So at any point in time, someone could just put on a helmet and actually see what their individual robots are doing on the moon. Once you go to the moon, robots are going to have to be relatively specialized. Uh, the rover at the moment that we have on Mars are basically uh, tourists. They're out there like taking samples and taking pictures, but they don't really do much. 
when we're going to the moon, we're probably going to stay next time, and they're going to actually be constructing um, habitats and that type of thing, so they're going to have to do a lot more. Um, they're going to be specialized, and you're going to want to know what they're doing, and regardless of what your sensors are saying, visual data is going to give you much better input to the operations of your devices. Anyone else? One more question. Yes? Power source at the moment is pretty much going to be lithium ion batteries. I have some plans to possibly survive the lunar night using um, some different things that I've been talking to people in different labs about. If I actually get this money, I would probably, I have, uh, I've been invited out to NASA Ames Research Center in California, which is basically Silicon Valley NASA. Um, and then somebody there is going to actually talk to me about how to do that. And, uh, uh, but basically, anything non-nuclear doesn't survive to negative 180 Celsius. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Russ.